Hello everybody, Jeremy here, and in one of my earlier videos, I showed off this, the uh, Canon TX, and a uh, manual SLR camera from the 1970s, and about how I found this in my parents' home, and I became so taken with it, uh, and just how these cameras were made back in the day, and, and how it encourages and forces you to learn about photography, and how to properly adjust uh, uh, aperture and, sh and shutter speeds and ISO and doing all that stuff and I also mentioned how it inspired me to seek out and purchase the Pentax K1000 which is regarded as being like the de facto camera for students and beginners back in the day and maybe in some instances even modern times for people who want to learn more and more about photography so I purchased one and I happen to have it right here. So, this is the Pentax K1000, a camera that is iconic and has a pretty, uh, some, maybe somewhat convoluted history. You know, mechanically, this camera and the Canon camera, you know, they're, they're pretty much the same. The Canon is a little bit heavier, but besides that, the way that these cameras operate you know, are very, very similar. You know, it's a lot of the same stuff. There's still the film advance lever. You still open up the back cover of the camera by lifting this up and opening this. I'm not going to open it because I have film in there and I don't want to ruin it. And same, uh, same shutter speed dial and lift it up and that's how you change the ISO. A lot of this, it's very much the same. It's just that the Pentax K1000 just kind of developed a legacy as being the camera to go to you know, for students and schools and all that stuff. And I just thought there'd be something really, really cool to have. Now, a little history about this camera. Actually, a few different versions running around right now. Uh, based on my research, I learned that this camera was produced, uh, manufactured, and assembled in Japan in the late 1970s, 1976 to 1978. And then, after that, while the parts were still being made in Japan, they were being assembled in Hong Kong, and I have the cam one of the cameras from that era. I think these cameras might be among some of the most popular ones because they were being assembled in Hong Kong for longer than they were in Japan. And it's indicative by a couple of markings on the camera. You see right here on the top, right above Pentex, it says Asai. That's, uh, that's a marking, and then you have this, this emblem right above there that kind of helps to tell you that this is one of the uh, cameras that were created using the Japanese parts. Now, after they stopped being manufactured in um, Japan and assembled in Hong Kong, everything got moved over to China. And when China started assembling and creating the parts for it, they actually stopped making the entire camera out of metal and instead opted for hard plastic in some areas. So, while I'm, I, based on what I've read, I do not think it really affected the picture quality and everything of the camera, but when you substitute metal for plastic, there is a different feel to it, even if it is hard plastic. So, if you're like a collector or someone who just wants to have one of these cameras, then the ones that were made uh, from parts in Japan will be the ones that they would likely want to get above the ones that were made in China. So, this camera has a lot of history, as I said before, and I'm just really happy to have one. I put some film in here earlier today. I took a few pictures. I'm on about my ninth exposure right now. And, um, you know, I'm really just looking forward to getting out there, uh, putting some black and white film in here after I'm done with the color film, and just getting them developed and seeing, you know, overall what, what, what they're going to look like and, you know, adjust the performance of the camera, make sure there's nothing terribly wrong with the lens or anything like that. You would be amazed how difficult it is or how inconvenient it is to find a place that still develops film. You know, it used to be you just go into, you know, some drugstore and they would develop the film for you, but even the big chains like Walgreens or CVS or whatever, a lot of them don't develop film anymore. You can take your film in there, and they'll say, well, okay, we'll take it, we're going to send it out to another place. They'll develop it, they'll send it back, and then that's how you do it. And that whole process can take close to a week. 
And the only place that I've been able to find in my area that still develops film in one hour is just a little specialty camera store that's like 35 minutes away from me. So when I'm done with this color roll, and once I go get a black and white roll and I go through that, I'm going to go get those pictures developed and we'll be able to see all of the majesty that these manual cameras can produce. I mean, some images that these things can make can still rival what DSLRs can do today. Of course, that's a lot to do with the person operating the camera and not necessarily the tech, but there is an aesthetic with film that you just can't get with digital you know I made an analogy to a record player in the last video you can simulate record player noises and static and grain but it's nothing quite like the real thing so that's all I really wanted to do I just wanted to share uh, the my Pentax K1000 with you guys and I'm happy that within you know a week and a half's time I now have two awesome manual cameras from the 70s and 80s. I'm not too sure when this was uh, manufactured. You know, this could have been in the late 70s, this could have been in the 80s. I'm not sure. I'm just happy to have one. So, if you would also like to have a manual camera, you know, people just gave these things up when everything started to go digital. So, you know, just check out your thrift stores, check out online sites and everything, and look for one that's at a pretty decent price. Now, I know a lot of people say, don't buy your cameras from eBay, and to that I say, pshaw! They don't sell these things anymore new. Now, if you're going to find one new, good. I'm happy you might have done that, but it's not likely to happen. So, the way I look at it, places like eBay are going to be the safest places you can go and buy something like this, as long as you take into consideration all of the standard practices that you should already be doing when you buy from eBay. You know, read the description. Uh, try to determine whether or not the seller knows what they're talking about or if this is just something they found in an attic and they're trying to get rid of. Read their feedback. See if they sell similar items. See what other people have to say about that. You know, find out if they have any type of money back guarantee, any kind of return policy. So if someone says, hey, I just kind of found this, I'm charging this much for it, no returns, no exchanges, none of that stuff, then, you know, you have to be really cautious with that because chances are they don't know what they're doing about the camera. They don't know if it works or not. They're just trying to get it out of their hair. You'll get it, and you'll have no recourse if the thing doesn't work. So always do your due diligence and make sure that the person that you're dealing with is going to be offering you some sort of recourse to reverse your purchase if you want to for whatever reason and if for some reason they want to go back on their word well eBay is in the corner of the buyer the majority of the time so the way that I see it you're safer buying with eBay then you would be going to a garage sale or a Goodwill. You know, good luck going back up to those places saying, can I have my money back? You know, they might give it to you back. Or a lot of places just might say, hey, it was sold as is. You, you know what you got yourself into. So with cameras this old, it's pretty much the best way that you're going to find them. But just make sure that you do the right thing and check, double check, triple check to make sure the seller that you're getting it from is someone that you think you can trust. So always look at that feedback, always read the descriptions, ask questions, as many questions as you want. They're trying to sell you something, so don't be embarrassed to ask question, 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 because it is your money that you're spending. So hope you take that advice from me. Uh, thanks for watching this video. I'm going to go have some more fun with this camera. So until next time, I'll see you later.